yellow is Georgetown, and red is called Charleston. Uh, so we are in the starting sequence right here. I believe the line is a little off to the left. We'll see it happen in a minute. Um, but we'll see these guys break up into pairs uh, really visibly. So right there, right on the side is the committee boat. I think this is just an umpire. But we can see everybody there. They're kind of broken up into, uh, into pairs there and they each kind of dueling with each other. Oh, hold up. I've got, they've got their own commentary going on and that was really confusing having their audio in my ears while I'm trying to talk. Anyway, so we see, you know, these, these guys are, you know, kind of trying to luff each other up, uh, keep each other from getting to the spot they want to be in. Um, so actually it looks like this is the committee boat, the pins somewhere over there. We can't really see it right now. So this pair, if actually, if we scroll back a little bit, watching through this pair, they're trying to, each one is like trying to hook the other. So this guy is just got clear, but now he's up. So the yellow boat's chasing him and the yellow boat's lured now. And so there's, you know, there's, there's, kind of bouncing back and forth between who's got the control. Uh, we know if, you know, if you become the lured boat, then now you can luff the other guy up. But if you stay as the windward boat, then you're the one that's kind of chasing the other boat out to the left side uh, away from that line. And we've seen before how that can be very difficult to get out of if you end up as the farthest left boat over there. The boat next to you can really stop you from getting back to the line. The terms for that would be leading and pushing into, Thank you. into the uh, line. It's a big match racing thing, too. We know that Dan is the foremost expert on such topics at SCC right now. Uh, but yeah, now we can see here's the pin. Looks like we're probably in the last 20, 15 seconds, something like that. Uh, we do have this one red boat. Looks like they're kind of controlling both these yellow boats right here at the pin. I uh, having trouble making it. Looks like everybody was clear there. Um, and yes, yeah, spoiler alert, because I've already watched this race. Nobody was called back. Uh, so they were all clear. Uh, but we do have this situation now where this red boat tacks out and it's one single red boat kind of pinning both these yellow boats to this left side. Um, and so that leaves, you know, this guy, the, the red team is, being, is able to do a pretty good job right off the start of covering that whole course. Um, just like we've talked about, you know, the three boat weave for the two, three, four on the last beat, um, on the first beat, if we can cover that course in the same manner, uh, all the better. So these two red boats over here are really just keeping tabs on the one yellow boat. And this red boat here is, you know, keeping kind of holding both these guys off. Now this guy's separated enough that, uh, you know, he's pulled a bit ahead. And this red boat understands that he doesn't want to sail underneath the yellow boat, so he'll tack and head back the same direction. So making sure that he knows that if he crosses behind the yellow boat, then he's committed to being behind the yellow boat. Um, but we tack before, we're still sailing in clean air going the same direction, and if there's some sort of wind shift or something else going on, there's the possibility that we, you know, we, we change angles, one of the, the red boat draws back. Um, but once we've passed behind that yellow boat, we know that we're not going to be able to, we, we are behind them. So it looks like right there, we've got the one of the, the red boat that was in the middle. They're coming over here and this yellow boat has to duck. So the yellow boat, when they're doing this, they have to make sure, they have to kind of calculate, if I duck this guy, there's John entering the waiting room. If I duck this red boat here, am I going to, still be be able to stay on top of this red boat and he saw that he could he's kind of sailing right above him right in his bad air if he had to duck a little further down he might have been you know even a few feet further back he might have slowly got flushed out the back um, but he didn't and so he's able to that was a good move for him he's controlling this red boat now and what's just happened in our foreground so again we see this the red boat would have cleanly crossed the yellow boat but he's just tacking a little early that way he's, that, that bad air coming off the windward side of his sail is gonna flush right back to that yellow boat. Yellow boat understands that, so he's tacking out. And looks like, I think that's mark two, so mark one is just off the screen, so we're not in danger of being over the ley line yet, but yellow boat is being pushed out to that port ley line, and we know that oftentimes it can be dangerous if we're 
on the ley line far away from the mark. Eventually that red boat's gonna come back. We look like we're in the same position. Uh, and so they're gonna attack on us again. And then once we've done that long enough that we're at the ley line, we've got a choice to make. Do we stay in the bad air or do we, uh, you know, do we uh, have to tack out again and be over the ley line? So here we can actually see uh, they, they didn't want to tack out again. So watch what the yellow boat does. First they head down to, to start to duck, but then they see him tack. So they head back up and they're really pinching up. They're, they're way above close haul. The jib was maybe luffing a bit there, just giving as much distance as possible away from that red boat so they wouldn't get his bad air. And I would say it looks like they, they really did that. I, I think they'll be able to hold on to that position uh, and not slowly suck down into his bad air. And, uh, and, and fall below like that. Uh, looking here, so the, the yellow boat actually looks like they could have called starboard, this yellow boat on the right. They could have, they could have forced the red boat to tack, but they are getting up to the, the area where they do want to start making their way back here. So instead, they, they made sure that they wouldn't cause the red boat to mess up their teammate, and they tacked just in front of him, so they're leading the red boat in. And uh, so right now, the, the, the yellow the two yellow boats are in a pretty strong position over the red boat here. Um, so the whole, the whole deal where these two yellow boats were pushed out to the left right off the start, uh, you know, that, that could turn to a good thing, could turn to a bad thing, but they were two boats on the left side. So did the right side pay off better? Uh, it looks like it maybe it stayed, stayed fairly even. These guys, these guys are a bit ahead, so maybe the right side was a little better, and these two yellow boats had no chance to go for that. Um, but for however things turned out, we definitely have a red boat in the one coming up to this mark. And again, this is mark two, so mark one is just off our screen to the left. So coming up, you know, they're they're figuring out what's there, what's the play, what's the position, who's where. Uh, we definitely have that red boat in the one, um, but we've got this yellow boat here that's probably the two right now. So we can see these two guys. I don't know who's probably the yellow boats initiating things there, but there the yellow boat is trying to luff this red boat up. It looks like we've got another yellow boat off to the right of our screen somewhere. So we'll see where things come out as we go in there. So red, red boat in the first place position is, is tacking. They're kind of sitting here at the wind remark. Uh, yellow's thinking right now we probably have the two and the three, right? But then we also kind of look like we have the six. Uh, maybe it's a it's a little tricky between this guy and this guy as to who's in the sixth place position. Um, so as we get closer and closer to the mark, that'll become more apparent. Um, but if this this red boat here is wanting to make this yellow boat be the six, so there's probably going to be some battling right there going on. So red boat's going to round the mark, but not go too far. They're moving slowly. We definitely have the two and the three for the yellow team. So yellow team right now, they're definitely thinking play two. Red team is thinking play four, because it looks like, especially with this boat on starboard, this boat on port, this guy is gonna stay ahead of the red boat here. So red team is thinking play four, the one, four, five. Unless if you're the red boat coming into the mark there, I, you can probably steal the three and get in front of the yellow boat. You're talking this play guy? One, yeah, play one's a lot easier to win than play four is. That's also true. Depends on, depends on whether this guy decides to play back or play forward. Does he focus on slowing up this yellow boat or does he focus on stealing the, uh, stealing the three there? I uh, don't actually remember exactly what happened right there, so we'll find out. And... Yeah, we're still close. Looks like he looks like he's playing back. He's making sure that this yellow boat stays in the six. Well, which he's still on starboard. I think I think he could get him if he wanted to. We'll find out. Yes, so. I actually don't remember who rounded. I think I think red rounded with the the one four five. Um, so I think in this position he's thinking, make sure this guy's in the six because if I round in the three, you know that's still not quite a stable combination. Uh, and if I round in the three, I'm guaranteeing that my teammate is in the six. Um, so probably his probably his thinking as we watch things go around here. Yeah, he just doesn't quite have enough speed to catch this guy. So his his line of thinking there would be make sure that we're not in the six, and you know we can convert a one four five later. 
whether or not we look back at the end of the race and think that was the correct move there, um, that I would imagine is what's going on at this point. It's, it's an example of it's not the wrong call, um, but there might have been a better one or like an OG God move that you could have pulled. But that sure. was the uh, it was a 100 percent correct move. It was not wrong, which is what you want to be doing at the end of the day, especially at this level. Most mm -hmm. of it is just not making mistakes. And he was very careful not to make mistakes. It actually like looks like, you can kind of see here, it looks like this yellow boat had to spin for something. I'm not sure if there was, I'm not sure if there's contact. Probably looks like there was contact right there. So this yellow boat is actually spinning, which is going to put him. Uh, oh, you know, yeah. Ooh, what was that noise? Um, anyway, so now we have really excellent drone footage right here coming way up above so we can see from the top um, but definitely big let's actually go back 10 seconds there uh, definitely 145 for the red team um, but yellow team is working on uh, consolidating they're trying to bring that six back in they know he was slowed up here so we notice this guy has mark room this yellow boat here has mark room on the red boat so as long as he doesn't leave the zone, and he, he is, he's getting fairly close there, but there were no penalties called on this spot, so he doesn't leave the zone. Um, but he knows that this red boat can't go in, so he'll go as high as he can uh, in order to slow these guys down as much as possible, because now we've got the five is going to be catching up, and the yellow team is just trying to do everything they can at this mark to get their six back into play immediately so that he's in contention on the downwind. So there we go. So so we've gone so high that we're actually able to come down and it looks like red boat or yellow boat is now jiving on the starboard, pushing this guy away. Uh, and this guy's uh, this guy's rounding slowly, but we also notice the red boat up in front. He knows that he, he can see things are are still a little tricky. Nothing is uh, guaranteed yet, and he's not leaving. We can see he's he's sitting there with his sails trimmed in, and this is college nationals. He's not doing that. Uh, by accident. Uh, he is making sure that he doesn't leave uh, what's going on. So he's, he's staying in front, but he's here if things need to happen. So uh, right there, from Mark 1 to Mark 2, we are now all back in the race. Yellow team's done a great job at that mark, and uh, this guy who had to do a spin is now right on the tail of the five again. So with that, real close, one four five to 2 three, six, we're rounding and I love this uh, overhead view here. I wish we had that for like the whole race. So I'm not exactly yeah. sure. Go ahead, Dan, what'd you got? I so said you do have that view in virtual regatta, the Ooh. whole race. Um, yeah, so I'm not exactly sure what, uh, what the thinking would be here, why they kind of switched positions and are, and are driving underneath each other and also underneath this guy. Um, but for whatever reason, they decided he's going over here. And this guy is coming back out uh, to the left. And I think, uh, how'd this play out? I don't remember how it played out. Yeah, so he comes up. And right here, here's a big move that may have, may or may not have changed the, uh, the outcome in the end. But this guy's coming up. So we see this guy's coming over. Uh, he's trying to luff up this red boat so that this yellow boat can get out of the way. The red boat sees it, and we can see he's a little bit he's a little bit hesitant. He like goes up and goes down. He's trying to figure out what's the best thing to do, uh, and he starts he starts heading up. But then a little too late, he decides to jive to starboard, and uh, that would be that's a rule fifteen call. He got I think that it was an umpire call. He had a seven twenty to do in about five seconds here. Um, so that's. Uh, a rare moment of maybe indecision that we see in uh, at this level of play, but it was in the end very costly, right? If either there are two things he could have done. One is he could have headed up, break the overlap so that this yellow boat is now bound by rule 17 proper course, or he could have jived to starboard. Uh, but he, he hesitated. So by the time he decided he wasn't able to do either one. Uh, and so it ended up with him taking the penalty and so now he's in a, f a fairly deep six at this point because uh, these guys are all running downwind, running away. And the yellow team 
just like that has the two, three, four. So they're going to stay spread out. Uh, they're going to make sure that somebody's keeping an eye on this red boat. And then actually another kind of questionable race strategy as the yellow team that's got the two, three, four, uh, this guy decides to luff the red boat up into the wind uh, to the extent that all of a sudden the six is now reconnected. And so if you have, if your team has the one, two or the one, three, and they're working on converting it to a one, two, uh, then by all means, go ahead and, you know, take out the whole backfield if you're your third boat in your team. Um, but when you're the two, three, four, you still do have a responsibility to stay out of the six. So pushing yourself back into a position where now you're suddenly fighting two people uh, is maybe not the best idea. Um, so that's, I would say, again, that's probably a, that you could almost say that was the wrong call. Uh, we'll find out in, in a couple seconds whether or not it works. But uh, I would say that was, that was maybe the wrong call to make there maybe luff the guy up a bit, slow him up, but we're not going to take him all the way up into the wind uh, and reconnect the six that was pretty far back. Uh, but anyway, so now we're, let's look back at the, the guy in first here. So this red boat, um, again, his, his responsibility is he has to keep the one and he has to slow down the race. Um, and he's actually doing a decent job. We're going to watch these two kind of jibe battle each other. Um, so this guy is the red boat. He's defending the left. Um, so he's, he's like, I got to jive away, but now I want to get close to this guy again. But I don't want to get too close. So we're going to head back down, uh, come on over. And so we're, we're really slowing ourselves down. If you can kind of, if, if we can kind of see that the way he's, the movements are really jerky. He's only going as fast as he needs to, to keep level with this yellow boat and to keep on. And he's staying on the left side. So he doesn't need to, He's, he's coming to a stop when he can, but just keeping up with the yellow boat. Um, and I think at this point, if I remember where we are in the video, the Mark 1 is somewhere around here, or sorry, Mark 3, the mark that they're going for. It's somewhere over here. So we're getting down to the bottom. So eventually we're going to see them uh, turn and go over this way. Um, but he's, he, this, this red boat is really doing, doing all he can to slow the race down while still ensuring that he stays in first. I think a lot of the a lot of the trick for when we're you know when we're we're beginning learning team racing, uh, one of the one of the biggest uh, obstacles maybe mental obstacles is that we when we have a situation like this where we're in first, we know that we have to keep first place and we want to slow down the race as much as possible, but we kind of worry that if we get if we purposefully close the distance the way this guy has been that maybe we'll make a mistake and we'll let this guy pass us by accident. Um, and you know, that will happen multiple times when we're learning. Um, but we, it just means that that's one of the things we have to develop is the, uh, the confidence in our boat handling ability that we can slow up and it doesn't matter to us whether we're 20 boat lengths ahead or one boat length ahead of the second place. We have to build that confidence that we'll still be able to hold on to that first. Um, so I think, I think that is, that is one of the big things, uh, that you, that we have to develop to be able to get to a, a higher level of team racing. Uh, but anyway, so we see coming up in just a second, Mark three is right around there. Oh, that's the empire boat. It's over there. Um, but so they're, so they're driving over, they're heading for it. And, uh, again, we are trying to close up as much as we can. We can see in the back here, no matter whether that was the right or the wrong call, the yellow boat has still basically made it work. He's still, there's, this is still the three and the four right here. These red boats are still the five and the six because these, the yellow guys have stayed on the left looking downwind. So they're, they'll be inside at the mark. So whatever the, whatever the percentages of that move working out were, he got the, uh, he got the percentage of it, of it uh, correctly working in his favor. Uh, so we'll, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, but anyway, so so red boat is definitely uh, definitely condensing things. We're catching up a bit, and we can see there he is almost sitting still, right? And here's our mark. So now he's definitely in the zone. He's got the mark room, uh, and he's going to he's going to drive away. He's this yellow boat is trying to run wide, 
they're almost going outside of the zone completely. Um, and then Red Boat realizes I can't leave the zone if I want to, you know, stay ahead. So he he stays ahead again, maintaining that small distance, but in a position that he can't lose the the first. So here we've got Red Boat's going to be still slowing the or the the first place guy, uh, the the yellow boat still pushing him forward, still making him keep moving because if the red boat stops at this point, the yellow boat's just going to run underneath and and go. Now these guys, we've got we can look at this whole situation and this boat in a fleet race has mark room on this guy, this guy, and this guy. This boat in a fleet race has mark room on this guy and this guy, um, but in this position, we know that since we're on a team, we're gonna let this guy go. And when these two red boats try to follow him, we're gonna use our mark room, this guy up top, and he's gonna actually come down and do that mark four trap that we talk about occasionally, that we actually saw happen at mark two as well. And he's gonna make sure that those two red boats stay in the five and the six. And so as we round, the red boats are kind of stuck there. And this guy has actually, whether we call it unfortunately or not, he can't really tack right now. Uh, he got his bow in under there. And then that, we'll call those two were the pair. So we know first of a pair tacks, he goes out there. And these two guys are going to stay connected. And now we have kind of split into, you know, three pairs coming up wind. So yellow is controlling two pairs, still the definite uh, two, three, four. The only thing that's really a possibility of being a problem for them is this pair right here. So we can see that uh, I would say we're probably as far as upwind goes, we're about even. Maybe red still got a little bit in it, um, but the problem will come when uh, the yellow boat, if the yellow boat wants to tack, he can't uh, unless he heads way down and tacks and ducks the red boat. All right. And, and that's going to be a move that the red boat knows about and is anticipating. So when he sees the yellow boat head down, he'll be heading down with the yellow boat. Um, and so it's gonna be very difficult when this yellow boat wants to tack. Um, it's basically gonna be when the red boat wants to tack. Uh, yellow boat's not gonna be able to tack until the red boat wants to. Um, with that being said, uh, the red boat is also having to keep an eye on these two yellow boats, because if these guys just sail out to the right side forever, uh, then suddenly we look back and like, oh, one, two, and there's the race for the yellow team. So he's still trying to maintain his first, um, but, He's, uh, you know, he's, he's got the ability to pin out this yellow boat, whether or not that's helpful or not in this situation. Um, it was at this point, if I remember correctly, the commentators were mentioning that uh, the, you know, the, the big strong point about the two, three, four is that you're able to set up that three boat weave and cover the entire course. So you've got three boats covering two boats. Um, and that's why it's so hard to break up the two, three, four. Um, and in this particular situation where this one yellow boat is pinned, he can't do anything over in the middle of the course. It is now only two versus two. And so that's still going to be, you know, the, the yellow team is very strong in this 2v2 right here. Uh, it's, it's, there's not much chance of anything happening, um, but it is slightly weaker than if they had the three boat weave. So that may be, we'll find out, maybe that's, maybe that's the one saving grace for the red team right now. Um, but we are, you know, the yellow team's still in a very strong position that's going to be difficult to break up on this final beat. So we keep moving and, and I think most of the action has, uh, has pretty much stopped until we get back to the line. Um, cause you know, we've, we've seen with these, uh, with these higher level team races, everybody tends to finish very close together, no matter how things spread out before. Uh, especially when, you know, when these two guys are coming back in, the red boat is going to have control over this yellow boat. He, the red boat can make this pair go as fast or as slow as he wants. So if he realizes they're well ahead of this group here, he can slow down if he wants. And, and hopefully he can use his starboard advantage to, to do something to the yellow boat. So, um, you know, there's a lot of things that can still happen. And let's actually go back so we can see this little action going on. So this is exactly what we were talking about just a minute ago. When the yellow boat wants to tack, he's going to have to try to head down real quick. But the yellow boat, the, the red boat knows that. He heads down and, and blocks him. Um, and so here, 
uh, we're a little too far away to really be able to see exactly who's doing what, but uh, we've got that umpire boat there. And uh, it, in the end, the yellow boat spun. Uh, they did a single spin, you know, voluntary penalty. The umpires actually green flagged it. So the yellow boat was being safe. They thought, or that was just, that looks like that was just a main sheet drop. Um, they knew that, you know, they, they had the big, uh, big advantage here. They weren't going to lose anything by just one spin. They'll catch right back up and still be in the strong second. Um, but they didn't want to risk getting red flagged and having to do two spins, which would set them back a little more. Um, so they, they went safe. They, they thought it might've been their penalty. Um, and they, and they took the spin, uh, just to, to, uh, exonerate themselves. Uh, but it turned out it was no penalty. Umpires green flagged it. So we are coming in and again, kind of same thing. Turns out I have watched this race before. Um, so red boat, we can see he's slowing up. He's making sure he still holds on to the one. Uh, looks like, I think that's actually Mark two. So the pin is the, the finish pin is somewhere around here. So the line is line is not huge. Um, so red boat definitely still has the one, but he is slowing down, uh, slowing up this yellow boat as much as he can. Uh, cause we can see there, you know, there's a shot. Maybe we can get a one, three. There's things are, are still possible because this pair is further out. Looks like maybe that's the pin right there. Hard to see with the resolution we've got. Um, but it is, it will be definitely a one for the yellow team. And then, uh, this guy decides he's actually not going to finish just yet. Although he kind of, at that point, there really wasn't anything he could do. It looked like he went down to try to turn this red boat into the five. Um, but at the spot he left it, you know, he, he was going to lose either way. He was either going to get the, the red team was going to get the two, three, six, if he didn't do anything or like here, he went down and let the yellow team get the one, three. Um, and you know, probably, probably doing something is better than doing nothing in that situation. Um, cause you know, maybe, maybe he had, misjudged where this yellow boat was maybe this red boat right here had actually got the one and the yellow team has a two three and so now he's hoping that maybe we can turn this into a four five uh, and so it's would be improbable but it, there's at least a chance there so that's probably something similar to what was running through his mind in that case um, but we, we definitely see you know despite how spread out things got on the final beat uh, we we condensed it right back together into this finish line, no matter who, uh, no matter who ended up winning. Uh, and yeah, it did definitely, definitely look like the, uh, the yellow team there gets the one, three, one, three, six, I guess we'll give maybe one, three, five. 